Hi Pamela, this is Don again on your quiz on section 5.4 and 5.5. You did well uh, on the, the quiz overall. Um, this first problem that you missed has to do with the mean height of women in the country. Um, that tells me this is the population. We're talking about all the women in, in the country. And their mean height is 64.3 inches. We took a sample of 75 women. And we want to know what is the probability that the height, the mean height in the sample is greater than 65 inches. We're given sigma, which is the standard deviation of the population, 2.3. Five, nine. And you got it wrong, and you came up with an answer of 0.3824, and I'll show you why you got the wrong answer here. Let's look at Excel. Okay, here's Excel, and it's a spreadsheet. Again, I think I shared it with um, the class uh, version of it, and I've uh, built just a little table over here. The blue, of course, is my input. And I put in the mean, 64.3, the population standard deviation, 2.59, the end value for our sample of 75 women, and the X that we're interested in is 65. Now, here's where I think you went wrong. This information, the mean and the standard deviation are given for the population of women in the country. But we are interested in the sample of 75. So we can't use the sigma of 2.59. We've got to come up with the standard error, or the population standard deviation. Uh, and we do that by using the formula standard deviation of the sample is equal to sigma divided by the square root of n. And that gives us a standard deviation of 0 0.299067. And I usually keep those uh, uh, many decimal places because it, it can make a difference. And I calculate my z value using the standardized function of B4, which is, whoops, I've moved things down, so I'll have to redo that. But use the standardized function, uh, which uses the mean, the, I mean the x value, the mean, and the, uh, let me just stop there. Okay, I apologize. I had, um, at the last minute, inserted these four rows so I could put the actual problem statement in here so I could remember it and reuse this later on. And that threw off these uh, uh, written equations out here, so I just updated those so they're they're accurate. I apologize. But anyway, um, we use the standardized function and that takes in the x value, the mean of the sample, which remember under, under the central distribution theory, the mean of the sample for a normally distributed population is equal to the mean of the population. We need our standard error, our standard deviation of the sample, which we calculated again by taking the sigma and dividing by the square root of the sample size. Then I use the norm.s function, which again takes the x value, the mean, the standard deviation, and we use true because we want the cumulative distribution function, which is all of the area under the curve uh, to the left of our value of x and we want though the value to the right of x which is 1 minus that value that's the area to the right and that is an answer of 0 0.0096 you use as I said the standard deviation of the population b6 and that gave an, a value of 0 0.6035. You subtract that from 1 to get 0 0.395. And again, I think you used slightly different 
uh, technology, and that is probably uh, why there's a difference there in your value. Value, but I think that's what you did. Pamela, this is another problem that you had trouble with on that quiz, and it has to do with the use of the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. And I am not really sure what, what you did wrong, but let's go through and see how to solve this. Um, we, we are given that 5% of the workers in the city use public transportation. We randomly select 265 and we ask them, do they or do they not use public transportation? So that fulfills the requirements for a binomial problem, binomial distribution problem in that we have randomly selected our workers, they're independent, and we're asking them a yes-no question, and the probability doesn't change uh, for each of those. So, let me bring up Excel. I have a spreadsheet that I built, and I think I shared uh, some of this with, with uh, the class, or it may have been another class. If not, I'll, I'll share it with the class after this. And what I did there was bring over the given information. We were given N of 265 and P of 0.05. We have to check N times P and N times Q to make sure they're both greater than 5. Calculated Q, which is just 1 minus P. And both NP and NQ are much greater than 5, so we can use the normal approximation to the binomial. Um, on some problems you may be asked for the mean of the uh, normal approximation and the standard deviation and the formulas for those are just n times p for the mean and the square root of npq for the standard deviation of that uh, normal approximation. So the first question was uh, what is the probability of exactly eight of the workers in our sample of 265 saying yes? And when we use the normal approximation, we have to apply the continuity correction, which is adding and subtracting 0.5. And so our x1 value is 19.5. Our x2 value is 20.5, and the way I uh, label it, x1 and x2. And I calculated the z value for each of those uh, x's and got a z of 1.76 for the lower and 2.04 for the upper. And then I used the norm s distribution function in Excel with a final parameter of true, which gives me the cumulative area under the curve from left infinity up to that value of x, or value of z, I'm sorry. And for the lower, that's 0.96. For the upper, that's 0.97. We want the area between because we want exactly 20, and it's that 19.5 to 20.5 band. And I think actually in my stat lab, that was the correct sketch and you actually selected the correct sketch. Um, subtracting those two gives us the area between x1 and x2 and that gives using Excel 0 0.0186. Um, my stat lab answer was 0 0.0185 which is close to what I got with Excel and of course would be within rounding. I would give credit for that. You came up with 0.9714, and I don't know how you got that. I um, I checked StatCrunch just to see if, um, let me go back here and put in 20 again, and I uh, checked a number of different possibilities, actually all of them, the greater than, the less than, and that was the close. I've, I've been wondering if you actually uh, use the binomial um, distribution instead of the normal approximation. 
to get your answer because that's awful close to 0.973. Let's go on back to Excel. The next question was, what is the probability of at least eight workers said they used the public transportation using that same basic formula? Um, I got a Z value. And then in this case, because we've got an at least, which is greater than or equal, everything to the right of that value of Z, I use 1 minus the norm dis to get 0.9475. And that compares favorably with the 0.974 in MSL. You got 0 0.0525, and I really don't know where that, that came from. If I put 8 in the uh, binomial and less than 8 gives uh, 0 0.083, that's not very close to 0 0.05. If I put exactly 8, I get 0 0.04, that's a little bit closer. I, I don't know, you know how you came up with that unless you were using some sort of uh, the actual binomial instead of the normal approximation. Okay, the last question um, was, uh, part C, I should say, is if you, what's the probability of less than 20 workers? So I have a little setup there, less than 20. We apply the continuity correction, gets us down to 19.5. I calculate the Z for that, and I put in, uh, use the uh, norm S function again, to calculate that area to the left of the Z, 0.9609. Um, both my stat lab and your answer were 0.9609, so you got that one correct. The last part of the, the problem, problem D, says the authority offers discounts to companies that have at least 30 employees to use public transportation. Your company, or this company has 468 employees. What's the probability that the company will not get the discount? Not as important there. So, if they are not getting the discount, that means they have fewer than 30, because the, the requirement is at least, which is greater than or equal to, so the complement of that which would not get the discount would be fewer than 30 or less than 30. So let's go back to our Excel. And we've got to go back to this start again. Put in N now of 468. Still a 0 0.05 would be our probability. And we check in P and in Q. We're okay. So I go down here to my less than block, I put in 30, which means we apply the continuity correction down to an X2 of 29.5. That gives me a Z of 1.2932, which is on the upper side of the normal curve. And using the norm S dis function, I get a value of 0.902, 90% chance that they will get fewer than 30. And that is the answer that my stat lab has. You had 0.4661. I looked at um, stat crunch, the binomial, and tried a number of different things to try to uh, figure out how you got 0.4661. So I don't think you were using the binomial on this one unless you made a mistake. But the answer is 0.9021. So I hope this helps a bit.